Hey, welcome to the channel. This is Carl, and uh, today I wanted to walk you around my uh, Grand Design Imagine 2150 RB and show off the modifications I've done. Um, I'm in Richmond, Virginia, and it uh, gets a little cold here in the wintertime, does freeze, but we also have some warm days, and with that, um, um, I like to winterize the trailer with air and not use antifreeze. That way, if I want to, I can dewinterize the trailer and um, go camping. So, start off with the first modification, which was I tried to, um, for the water heater to drain the water heater, I tried to put a uh, on-off switch valve instead of using the, the screw plug to, uh, to open that and close that. Uh, my first attempt um, didn't work, and the, the, the hose got blown off while we were camping, luckily, and uh, we heard it and water was spilling all over everywhere and uh, uh, didn't really work very well. But it was a good lesson because now when we leave uh, campsites we do try to turn off the water um, so we don't have any more issues in case something bad happens. So anyway, let's take a look. So walking around to the passenger side of the camper trailer um, along in the plumbing lines, uh, one of the things I did to make winterization easier um, the low point drains, um, I took off the um, screw caps and put on uh, switch valves um, just so I can take a, take a turn, making it a lot easier to drain those. Um, and then as we continue down the trailer, um, when we dry camp and we use the water tank, the, uh, uh, one of the things that annoyed me was the, uh, the overflow valve. Basically you fill the tank uh, until the overflow valve starts to drain off and then you're at the water spot, then you go to your campsite, and while you're going there, it just felt like gallons and gallons and gallons of water would come through the overflow valve and keep draining. So now what I do is I put an on-off switch on that overflow valve, fill the tank, starts to overflow, close the valve, and then uh, head to the campsite, um, and then open the valve back up um, once the water drains a little certain point. Um, the other thing we did for storage is um, just, a bunch, just ahead of that water tank, is I did add a tube uh, uh, to put the uh, stinky slinky inside and um, attach that right to the frame with self-tapping screws and um, in the center of the of the trailer I was able to put a, um, a pipe um, coupling around that to support that in the middle. That's That was a huge, um, a huge improvement from my perspective to keep that hose kind of outside the basement um, and then the bumper's not really designed for that, I didn't want to rust the bumper. All right, let's see if I can get a picture of this. So, down here below is the tube I bought. I've seen a lot of people that used, um, bought a pre, or just bought a PVC at their hardware store and built their own. For me, I just went ahead and bought a, a thing off of Amazon, a self, or a, a sliding adjusting tube. It's worked out pretty well. The The big thing on this is that uh, where to, how to place it on, and what I did was, I actually, because of this gas tube, um, I moved the a couple blocks of wood and shimmed it down from the uh, uh, from the frame to allow for this other cord or tube to run below that. So um, that worked out. It worked out pretty well. Um, and then as we go up, the uh, the basement space and the 2150 um, and Grand Designs in general are excellent. Uh, they're quite large and. Um, the problem is, is with a big space like that, it's uh, it's hard to store things. And so what I did was I went in and and lofted the space. I cut it in half with a big sheet of plywood. So now I have an upper and uh, a lower um, uh, section, and just able to fit a lot more stuff into it. And then right now it's not organized that well, but here's the uh, here's the shelf. Um, and actually I had a hard time getting it in when I installed it and so I had to cut a little bit of section there, but um, it's real nice as far as uh, being able to get stuff into the trailer, so. Here's the, uh, the other side of the, the basement and you can see, see here I, uh, here's the shelf, the lower and upper shelf. I'm still not really happy with this space. I, I'd like to, to organize it even better, but uh, basically I have a bucket or a pan here to put a lot of my stuff in. And, I just kind of throw stuff in here, so it isn't the best, but I haven't really got around to, to making it a little better. And I like to put my uh, my weight distribution system in the in the camper, even when I'm camping. So um, I just think it looks a little bit nicer. All right, here is the other side of that um, stinky linky tube. 
and again kind of a, a picture of how I did the uh, shimmed the shimmed off of the uh, the frame to bring this down so that you could have some of the plumbing that went underneath it and across it. All right, let's head inside and take a look at the some of the modifications inside, mostly mostly shelving. Oh well, here's one I hadn't planned on, but uh, keyless entry, love that. So. We would, uh, I have a little problem with my door. It doesn't latch very well. This, this hook here keeps kind of moving a little bit on me. So that's, that's a little annoying, but um, what are you gonna do? So, all right. So in the bathroom, a couple quick modifications. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but again, most of these travel trailers come with space and it, it looks pretty good. Um, here is just another example of adding a, a shelf to this big space so we can utilize it better. I mentioned before I like to uh, winterize and de-winterize my trailer so the, the uh, water heater is below this drawer and uh, to, um, I have to pull the drawer out to turn the valves on to uh, properly set that up and to get around that I simply cut out cut a little spot so I can get my arm back there so simple a very simple modification but it's it's a lot easier than pulling the drawer in and out so all right so now we'll look at the, uh, the bedroom and, and kind of the biggest uh, thing that you would see in a modification um, love building shells and um, well let's go take a look all right so I started here and um, Basically, my wife and I are hook people. We like to have hooks and hang things on hooks. So I ran ran this board across the length of the bedroom, put these hooks on it. It was great. Um, seeing some things about shoes, people put shoe racks around the basement of, of their uh, of their bed and put shoes on. And I was kind of looking at it, and I'm like, well, you know, there's this space above this these rack, this uh, hook thing I built. Maybe there's a little bit of space for shoes. And so that's what I did. Basically. Ran a um, two by four, or a rat two by four, but ran a board across, um, shimmed it with like one by ones, and ran it up. And then actually, this is uh, uh, ran it up to the stud that's in the wall in the ceiling, and uh, another board here to support it, and of course the board in the back. So did that on both sides of the trailer, um, and I think it worked out pretty well. I've got some some clothes over here, but. Uh, um, over time, we're continuing to look for more and more ways to store stuff. So, um, by the way, a tip here for finding the um, studs in the uh, ceiling were super easy. Um, well, they weren't super easy initially. I was trying to find them and I come like, where are they? But what I did was I actually took out this uh, trim on the vent and then you can just, you can actually see the studs and where they are. So um, that was a way, a nice way to, uh, to find those uh, to find those pretty easy. Wish I wish I could work on the. Wish I could do that on the walls, but a little bit iffy on where the stuff is on the walls. Um, I also did another shelf um, on this space here by the front door. Put in a uh, put in another shelf here too. Just uh, again to take these big spaces and uh, to utilize them better. So anyway, that's just uh, some of the modifications I did. Super simple. Still trying to get that uh, water heater so I can just have an on-off valve. Um, I've ordered something and it didn't didn't work because I can't screw it in because it's too knobby. So I think the next step is to go to the hardware store and maybe try to get an extension out a little bit further so the knob can be turned on outside of the uh, um, the water heater. So there you go. That's what I got. Thanks for watching.